Welcome to a discussion of VxRail deployment flexibility. In this video, we'll cover VxRail with vSAN clusters. Let's get started. VxRail was introduced almost seven years ago, and during that time, there have been numerous advancements. If you recall, when HCI was first introduced, it was primarily considered for general workloads like VDI. Now, more specific use cases have developed. For example, for cloud deployments, we have specific VMware for Cloud Foundation on VxRail deployment options. VCF on VxRail is something we'll leave for another video, but keep in mind that it provides a greatly enhanced ecosystem for running AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and other cloud applications. In the core data center, VxRail clusters with vSAN is the most popular deployment option. These clusters typically run the vSAN original storage architecture, but with the latest node models. vSAN Express Storage Architecture, or ESA, is a supported option too. Another option in the core data center is to deploy VxRail dynamic nodes and dynamic apps on with PowerStore. Dynamic nodes can also provide compute resources to Dell storage arrays, including PowerStore, PowerMax, PowerFlex, and Dell Unity XT SANS. Finally, out at the edge, customers can deploy single unclustered satellite nodes to areas where space is most limited. There are also two-node and three-node edge deployment options to provide clustered resources at edge sites where there is more space. Some edge sites can operate in pretty extreme conditions, like an Arctic research station, a military base in the desert, or on an ocean oil rig. For these harsh environments, VxRail also offers ruggedized nodes and platforms, like our VD4000, that includes air filtration and can tolerate extreme temperature conditions. VxRail also has edge-validated designs and supports VMware Cloud Foundation for your retail or branch offices and other edge sites. Let's start by distinguishing the original and express storage architectures, or vSAN OSA and ESA, from each other. The vSAN OSA foundation is built off of disk groups. These disk groups each contain a cache drive, along with multiple capacity drives. Write I.O. hits the cache disk first, before being moved to the capacity tier. You can adjust the number and size of the disk groups to find the desired balance point between performance and capacity. OSA supports hard disk, solid state, and NVMe drives. Then we have ESA. This vSAN foundation replaces disk groups with storage pools. A major way storage pools differ from disk groups is that with ESA, all disks are kept together and contribute to cache and capacity jointly. Combining capacity with cache disks removes the disk group failure domain and helps balance performance and capacity across the data store. Note that at least initially, only TLC NVMe drives are supported for use with ESA. For example, if you have a stretched cluster or even a two-node cluster and want to share storage with it using vSAN HCI mesh, then vSAN OSA would be required. If you want the fastest performance with the lowest latency, then vSAN ESA is the better option. Both architectures offer various benefits, and VxRail will help you maximize the potential of either deployment. ESA-based clusters use vSAN 8 and require vCenter 8 for management. These new ESA clusters can easily be managed from the same vCenter server as existing or new OSA clusters. Let's take a closer look at the new architecture. vSAN ESA builds on the existing vSAN stack to leverage the powers of multi-core, higher memory, and NVMe technology to introduce new capabilities. The new log-structured file system allows for faster ingestion of VM data to eliminate trade-off of performance for space efficiency and security 
When compression and encryption data services are enabled, the new Log Structured Object Manager and Data Structure introduces adaptive data resiliency that maintains storage policy settings while looking to improve space efficiency as a cluster node count scales up or down. An all-NVMe storage pool simplifies storage device management for performance and workload balance, while significantly cutting down the performance impact of an individual failed storage device. With the elimination of discrete cache and capacity drives, all drives in the cluster make up a storage pool. Each drive is its own fault domain. If a storage drive failure occurs, resynchronization is significantly minimized. In a storage pool, all drives contribute to cache and capacity. Balancing performance and capacity across the storage pool is easier. To ease the learning curve, Similar storage policies for vSAN OSA are used in vSAN ESA for a familiar management experience. Whether you opt for the traditional and established vSAN OSA or the new high-performance vSAN ESA, stretching your VxRail cluster across sites creates site resiliency for your application workloads. This way, if something like a power outage or a fire occurs, workloads can fail over from one site to another. A stretched cluster requires a cluster witness running at a third site. This witness can be a physical host or a virtual machine. Stretching a cluster allows you to balance your workloads across sites and more easily manage maintenance cycles too. Although the witness can tolerate up to 200 milliseconds, to keep the vSAN services working properly, a critical guideline is to keep latency between the sites below 5 milliseconds. To review the VxRail HCI system software common to all node types, check out the linked video. Thanks for joining us for this discussion about deployment types for VxRail with vSAN. Next time, we'll talk about another vSAN deployment type, namely two-node clusters. Until then, take care.